The people that's going to make smart buildings successful, the ones that think about this, how you take physical, digital and human assets in infrastructure and combine them together to drive a predictive outcome. You're listening to Smart Thinking, a podcast from WSP. I'm Matthew Marson, taking you on a journey into smart buildings. In this podcast, we're talking about the digital glue that brings it all together. We're talking platforms. Joining me today is Paul Russell, a thought leader in the IBM Watson IoT business with a background in construction design and the electronic sector. Paul's passion around buildings, workplace and productivity is driving engagements with clients. First question for you, Paul, and welcome. In your opinion, what is a smart building and why should we care? Thanks, Matthew. Thanks for inviting me to your, your podcast. The way we talk about smart buildings is really the shift from being a reactive asset to a predictive one. Um, so how do we make all the things that go inside a building, which are really separate, work together? The human being, for example, all of this IoT sensors, all of the technology and the environments as well. How do we actually bring that together in a way that it works together? Because at the moment, most buildings don't work that way. And so the goal from all of us in this industry is to achieve this outcome-based uh, result for a building. And the most interesting thing that we find, it's not always the nice, shiny buildings you see. It's all of those buildings that have been around for decades and will remain so. How do we make them smart is the really exciting piece that we find. Have you got an example of some of those outcomes that your clients have been able to achieve? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we work with facility management companies a lot. They use our software and they do some great jobs. Their industry are moving from an input workload to output because they've been driven by comfort, well-being, productivity, whether it's an airport, a hospital or an office block. So really the FM industry are really challenging themselves now to actually get better outcome from the data that's collected and how they can move to a predictable way of monitoring what the building's going to do whether that's an impact of the weather or uh, cues, um, temperature, all the aspects that affect whether you feel comfortable are really in this, the FM industry's world. And they're, they're a great example, but they're not the only ones. Real estate and others are all beginning to come together to try and solve the smart building challenge. I saw in the press actually that IBM were working with the facility manager ISS as to how they could use IoT technologies to I suppose find a lot of efficiencies in the buildings that they work in and provide a better level of experience. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I'm often asked when we're talking about how you make a smart building work and you pull those things together is what is a platform and why does a smart building even need one? Okay, that's a great question, one I'm asked all the time. So if I can just change it slightly and talk about an example uh, in the city of London. Someone we're working with who's actually um, acquiring a new build and uh, he's very much really a property developer. You know, his world is quite simple in that respect. You know, he builds it, sells it, and actually wants to make it as most efficient as possible. But he used the words, which I think resonate here, a digital backbone for the building. Now, we all know what buildings have in terms of IT equipment and IT network, but he was talking about a digital backbone that collects information about the building, whether it's energy or occupancy or well-being. So he was the first example of someone who probably wouldn't be thinking this way, was using this language to say, look, I have all these suppliers in my buildings, providing you know, heating and ventilation, BMS systems, lifts, all the things that we need. I want to connect them to a digital backbone. And, and I take that to mean a platform. And a platform that's secure, scalable, uh, you know, allows me to actually you know, maximize my costs and drive some value. And it's a new audience, uh, certainly for IBM, a new set of people that we need to work with and it's a new set of partners that I think are out there that need to come into this platform discussion. How is a platform different to a building management system? They're probably not going to be much different if you break it down. So a building management system is effectively an architecture, an architecture is a platform, so they are very similar. I think the difference I think I would use is that we need to connect these different systems like a BMS system, like an energy management system, environmental system, security systems, CCTV, all, all the things that happen into a way that I can extract knowledge from the data. Because all these systems collect their data in silos. They're deployed by different people, they use different protocols, they have different standards around taxonomies. So how do we actually get the data in a way that I can have a meaningful outcome? Too often, the data is too late. You know, it's been collected, there's lots of it, but it's too late. People have complained about the temperature, they've walked out of the room, it's too late. So how do we get the data in a place that we actually can have a predictable outcome. And that's really the platform discussion. 
What excites me about a platform and why I think it's different to a building management system is the ability to take data from business systems. So for instance, if you're an organisation that collects timesheets, for instance, I can compare what the building's doing, let's say it's uh, carbon dioxide levels on the open floor plan, and compare that over the year versus sick days. That might tell me whether or not I've got something wrong with my ventilation systems, or if actually I need to make a change to how the building's working, because I've actually been able to see the outcome in one of our businesses business systems and it's that interaction between the two that I think will start to prove business cases that in the past we probably would have considered quite fluffy. No, totally, it's a great point and what's really exciting and you know from my background is something called Knowledge Graph. So Knowledge Graph, you know, the ability to take information from different entities that exist in different places and actually start to look at relationships and dependencies. So for example, you know, the example of a, a lift and the temperature and a human being, all very different pieces of entities, all collecting different pieces of data and different systems. How do I take that data and start to look at what that data is telling me in a predictable way and using a knowledge graph, something that Google started many, many years ago, very common now in most large organizations, especially in finance and elsewhere around fraud detection. How can we take knowledge graph and apply that to a smart building context? Taking all of this data, and applying it in a way that you start to see anomalies. Which building is my problem this week, today, last week? What happened last year compared to the next 48 hours? What is the impact of the weather? What is the impact of the traffic? You know, the traditional BMS systems can't cope. The architecture underneath is not right. Knowledge Graph changes that. And that's something that, you know, IBM and others are really excited about. Because I think that's probably going to be something we'll see much more of in the future. And it just kind of makes sense. If you think we spend 90% of our time in buildings, why would we not try and make those better? Absolutely. I'll oh, tell you. I want to hear a little bit more about the sorts of issues that your clients are facing, because it seems that with the technology that you've got, you're able to make a difference. Yeah, there's so many issues. I'll try and keep it down to three. They're very different, but I'll go through them. The first one is skills. You know, so we're talking about a very digital discussion. Buildings are traditionally not a digital place. You and I are very digital in our bags and our technology on, on the desk here, but generally buildings are not very digital. Therefore, the skills of the people managing the buildings are more analog, less digitized. So there's a skills issue across the industry wide, which is a great opportunity for IBM yourselves to really exploit with your consultancy, because a lot of people are saying, I want the smart building, but I don't have the skills and I can't afford the skills. So what do I do? And it's a bit of a calling the headlights here. So we've got to fix the skills issue. I think alongside that, there's some real issues in terms of data standards, in terms of all of the different ways building systems can spurt out data. There's a whole industry now trying to resolve the standards in buildings to get to a point where that data is secure, where I can trust the data, and therefore I can have an outcome. And I think the final thing is just really energy and environment. You know, we see now in the climate we're living in, you know, the impact of energy on buildings and in environments around a building, in the cities especially, is a huge challenge for buildings to be smart. And everybody's now looking not just inside their own portfolio, but what is the impact to my people coming to work? I might be an airport or hospital. So looking wider. So you're starting to go back into the smarter city areas. And I see lots of customers beginning to wanting to try and pull in data, talked about the weather data. You know, if I know it's going to rain tomorrow, what can I do if I'm an FM provider? If I can predict the weather, which we can now, how can I use that to change what I do? And if I'm going to get paid on that as a service outcome, I need to be aware of it. So it's a real mix of different issues, but there's the top three. Okay. So skills, data, and energy. Yeah. If somebody wanted to set up a platform so that they could make their own smart building, what would your top tips be? Okay, I think job one would be uh, get some exclusivity with the partners involved. I think so, real estate, FM, IT, all of the people that are really part of what makes a building smart, traditionally very separate. So I think job one would be, what is the relationship like with those groups of people? Is there a way to bring them together? Is there, most importantly, a leader? I spend most of my time trying to find the leader, someone who cares enough to actually make it smart. Without that person, you tend to fall back into everyone's individual domains and you end up getting a lot of confusion and you just don't get very far. So that would be tip one, definitely. So that's very much a, a human thing. Top, tip two in terms of platform is to look at, you know, what, what is the ultimate goal we're trying to get from a smart building? You know, if it's outcome for the individual using the building, then how do we get that person or that team or whoever it might be to the data that's needed? So we do this thing called design thinking. 
you know, where we actually put ourselves in the shoes of the people. How do they think, feel, say and do when they use the building? And we work back the way, as opposed to I've got this great BMS system and I've got this great cloud platform and I've got these great sensors, you should buy it, which is traditionally what's happened and that's left us in the problem we have. So definitely bringing together the uh, design thinking side and the platform side. And then I think finally is to really look at what Knowledge Graph could do that the ability to take data and work with partners who've got those skills to expose the data in such a way you can make some meaningful decisions from. And that's very much a machine learning, data scientist world. But I think an investment in that skill set, I think is you're gonna reap benefits in the future. And they're all quite people focused actually. So get the sort of people to buy into it, be human in your design and invest in the right skills. Yeah, smart buildings you know, in any of the ways, it's about people. A big thank you to Paul Russell, thought leader in the IBM Watson IoT business. In our next episode, we're joined by Dr. Chlam Chapu, who talks to us more about artificial intelligence and its impact on the built environment. If something in this episode has piqued your interest, then have a chat with us. Email smart at wsp.com. You've been listening to Smart Thinking, a podcast from WSP. I'm Matthew Marson, and thanks for listening.